right. Hey guys, Hop here. Today we're talking about the best pistol dots for use with night vision. We've done one of these videos for rifle dots. Right off the bat, I have to point out that pistol dot selection matters a lot less than rifle dot selection for use with night vision for a couple of reasons. Number one, how often are you using your pistol under nods? How often are you using your pistol in general? Your handgun is a backup weapon at best, but more likely it's a carry weapon, not for use with nods. Handgun use under night vision is a pretty narrow slice of the pie, considering a lot of stuff has to go wrong for you to be using your handgun under night vision, especially considering a lot of guys do not integrate a handgun into their preparedness kit in the first place. So, while I believe that passive aiming capability is a very useful tool on a primary weapon, I think it's a lot less important on a handgun. Your mileage may in fact vary. Perhaps your primary weapon is a Mark 23 SOCOM milled for an acro and loaded with 45 Super. If that's you, why are you watching this video, peebs? Second thing to keep in mind is that a good passive aiming optic for a rifle needs good light transmission and dim brightness settings. But pistols are held at arm's length. Even optics with good light transmission aren't easy to see through when they're that far away from your face. All that changes if you're going to use a pistol dot as a piggyback or offset optic with a primary magnified optic, because then light transmission matters a lot more. The dot is closer to your face, and it's much more likely to be used because it's now an aiming solution on your primary weapon instead of a passive aiming solution on your backup weapon. Basically, handguns are used for concealed carry or as an emergency third line option to back up your primary weapon. So. Hopefully that explains some of my apathy towards this subject, but if your needs differ, well, then you know what to look for. So without further preamble, here are some of the best pistol dots that I've used for night vision. Let's go ahead and start with the one everybody wants to hear about, the Trigicon family of optics, including the RMR, RMR HD, SRO, and RCR. The RMR is, of course, the classic pistol red dot. There are a lot of bad things you can say about the RMR, but there's still somehow a really good option for pistol dots even in the current year. Light transmission of the RMR is only mediocre, and as far as day use goes, there's a lot of distortion and tint, which you don't notice as much on a handgun, but you will notice especially if it's on a piggyback mount. But on a handgun, that doesn't matter very much because the brightness settings are great. It gets very dim, and the spacing between the settings is very good. The Trigicon SRO, on the other hand, is quite a lot better than the RMR in a lot of ways. The window is clearer, has less distortion, it's larger, and it also does a lot better under night vision. Not to mention, you don't have to take the SRO off the gun to replace the battery. However, there are a lot of weird little problems with the SRO, like the fact that under certain lighting conditions it has kind of a phantom double dot issue that a lot of competition shooters complain about. Also, it has a reputation for being less durable than the RMR, but still, I think the SRO is plenty durable. Durable, it's just that the RMR is essentially invulnerable to damage. The SRO does mount to the same footprint as the RMR, but it is bigger so it overhangs the front of the footprint. That can make it a little bit more difficult to use in certain applications. Ultimately, the SRO is one of the best red dots for use with night vision because it's so well balanced. It just does have those weird little quirks that Trigicon seems unable to address. But thankfully, Trigicon very recently introduced brand new optics, the RMR HD and the RCR. The RMR HD is sort of a more advanced version of the SRO, and the RCR is an enclosed version of the RMR. What this actually means is Trigicon has introduced the RMR in slightly different footprints. The RMR HD is a lot closer to an RMR than it is to an SRO. Rather than being a ruggedized SRO, which is what I think a lot of people were more interested in, it's actually just a slightly larger RMR that has a circle dot reticle, so nothing groundbreaking there. As far as the RCR goes, Trigicon has been very upfront and kind of proud about the fact that the RCR doesn't change anything about the glass from the RMR, so it's still deeply tinted, deeply distorted, and has the same night vision performance. Now, that's not bad, because the RMR already has good night vision performance, the light transmission is good enough, and the brightness settings are excellent. The RCR has those beneficial properties, as well as being an enclosed optic, and it also fits on the same footprint. Maybe we all collectively got our hopes up and thought that the RCR would be mana from heaven, but it turns out it's just an RMR with a second pane of glass. But that's fine, because that's all anybody really wanted from the RMR anyway. It's an RMR with two panes of glass instead of one. Nice. So, not operator ready? <laughs> oh, this is fucking so operator. Because no operator would ever take a passive night vision shot with a handgun at 75 yards. But in my opinion, these massive enclosed optics are still kind of terrible for carry guns, so I would still just stick with a regular RMR for most purposes. 
Up next, the Aimpoint Acro P2. These things have great light transmission. If you look at Aimpoint's European website, they give the exact light transmission figures for all of their optics, and the Acro P2 is rated the same as an Aimpoint T2, Comp M4, Comp M5, etc. However, it does have a smaller window, and apparently that makes a bit of a difference, because if you compare them side by side, the Acro is still not as good as an Aimpoint T2. But as far as red dots meant to be mounted to handguns go, yeah, the Acro P2 is pretty much the cream of the crop. I'm sure that sounds great, but I don't like the Acro P2. The housing is very large, which kind of makes it worse than a traditional open micro pistol red dot for passive aiming. Not to mention normal use during the daytime, which remember, is what your pistol is probably actually for. But for piggyback use, the P2 is probably the top of the pile for this footprint. The light transmission advantage of the P2 makes a much bigger difference when it's mounted close to your face. But then again, a lot of guys are still going to use the Aimpoint T2 for that purpose because it's still just a little bit better than the Acro P2. At the end of the day, durability issues aside, the Acro P2 is a pretty phenomenal optic. It just fits into a really awkward middle ground between a proper pistol dot and a proper rifle dot. Up next, the Steiner MPS, another enclosed optic that fits to the same clamp-on footprint as the Acro P2. I've only used the MPS very briefly, but it gets disqualified because it seems to have a reticle focus issue like the Trigicon MRO. You cannot focus on your target and the reticle at the same time, so I'm just going to go ahead and disqualify this one and move on. Up next, the Leupold Delta Point Pro. The original Delta Point Pro non-night vision version can be used for night vision in a pinch, but even the lowest brightness setting is not that dim. The night vision version fixes that by having much dimmer brightness settings, and you can also program the dot to dial in your desired minimum brightness. The Delta Point Pro has insanely good light transmission and glass clarity. There is virtually no tint or distortion to the glass at all, and that seems to pay off big time under night vision. It's pretty much as good as you will ever see for a pistol dot. The downside, of course, is that the button control is horrible. There's a single button shrouded inside the optic. You have to jam your finger in there and press it. Plus, you can't actually see the optic when you're pressing the button, so you have to push the button and pull your finger out, then look at the brightness and repeat. Pressing the button makes it get brighter until it hits max, then dimmer until it hits minimum, and then technically you can hold it for a second to reverse the direction of change. But trust me, you will never manage to do that in any kind of hurry, especially not when you can barely focus on the thing with your fucking nods on. Come on, loophole, goddammit. If you can deal with the ergonomics problem, the Delta Point Pro Night Vision is a great performer on pistols and as a piggyback or offset. They have a reputation for being a bit fragile, and they're also one of the biggest, tallest pistol optics, and that makes them harder to co-witness sights through. That being said, despite the age of the Delta Point Pro, the DPP NV is the best passive aiming pistol dot I have ever used. Moving on to Hollow Sun, we have to split them into a couple generations. One of them is the older 407 and 507, and the newer ones are the 509X2, EPS and EPS Carry, as well as the 507 Comp. Light transmission on all those was fine. It's about on par with the RMR, but where they really fell flat was the brightness settings. They really could stand to get a little bit dimmer. Also, those earlier Hollow Sun dots had really tiny buttons on the side, which were hard to see, hard to feel, and hard to use, especially with gloves on when you're using night vision. The newer generation of Hollow Sun pistol dots, including the 509X2, the EPS, and the EPS Carry, are substantially improved. They have much better light transmission, they also get quite a lot dimmer on the minimum settings, and they also have bigger buttons that are easier to find and adjust. If we completely ignore Hollow Sun's reputation for tenuous build quality and longevity, then the full-size EPS is, hands down, the best pistol optic currently on the market. Unfortunately, it's difficult to ignore Hollow Sun's track record. You may go through a couple of lemon EPSs before you get a good one. But if you get a good one, it's probably the best dot you can get right now. It's small enough that you can actually put one on a carry gun without completely fucking ruining it. Unfortunately, the footprint is a little bit weird, and Hollow Sun's track record is a little bit subpar. Somehow, when I originally recorded this video, I forgot about the Bushnell RXS250 and the EOTech E-Flex. I'm putting these both together because they're pretty much the exact same optic. The E-Flex has very slightly dimmer night vision settings than the RXS250, and possibly slightly brighter, clearer glass under night vision. The E-Flex is assembled in the United States and costs slightly more than the RXS250, and that's the one that I would go for if I wasn't trying to save money. These are a good alternative to the Delta Point Pro NV if you don't want to deal with the skyscraper tall housing and shitty button controls of the DPP. I don't think these have the same raw performance as the Delta Point Pro NV, but they're cheaper and generally more ergonomic to use. So if you're stuck with the Delta Point Pro footprint, this is a pretty good option. 
Track record and availability of the E-Flex hasn't been that great, and the RXS250 is getting so hard to find, I think they might have been discontinued. Still, these aren't bad. Finally, let's round the list out with Sig Sauer. Sig has a couple of red dots that represent the absolute top tier of pistol dots, but they also come with a top tier price and some weird Sig related quirks. One of those is the Sig Romeo 2. This thing is absolutely a dominator on the market, except it costs more than an Aimpoint Acro P2, and even though it has an optional shroud that can be attached, it's not a true enclosed optic. SIG has the absolute best emitter technology and glass coatings in the business right now. They call it DARK, Dark Adaptive Reticle Coating. Come on, man. You cannot use part of the acronym in the acronym. Fucking insufferable. Unfortunately, it still uses the same Delta Point Pro footprint, which is not super common anymore. Also, the bolt-on shroud is not really the same thing as having an enclosed red dot. And like I mentioned, these things are insanely expensive. SIG also put all of this technology into the Romeo M17, which is an enclosed version that direct mounts to exclusively the military M17 variant of the SIG 320. The Romeo M17 is the best pistol dot in the world, but it doesn't fit a gun you own or ever will own, and it also costs 800 fucking dollars. So kind of a moot point. The new Romeo X series red dots are also pretty good, but once again, they're a little bit overpriced for what they give you and their daytime performance is not the best. They have quite a deep tint to them. One last thing to point out, if you intend to use a pistol for night vision, then you do not want tritium night sights on that pistol. Tritium night sights bloom very badly under night vision, and remember that night vision devices have an extremely narrow depth of field. If you're focused on the target, then the night sights of your gun are going to be completely huge and blown out and completely obscure your vision. It's so bad that you may not be able to use your pistol mounted red dot at all because your front night sight is probably going to bloom so badly that it blows out the entire image of your pistol dot. There is a persistent rumor that you can shoot passively using tritium night sights. This is essentially untrue. It's all just a nonsense post hoc justification for the retarded shit somebody was already doing. These days I think the official term is cope, but I speak English so I don't use words like that. No, man. I know people get mad when I don't just tell them what to buy, so let's try it on for size as a cap to the video. If you want a general purpose, hard use red dot that can be reasonably used for night vision, get the original Trigicon RMR Type 2 adjustable. If you want the ultimate in pistol passive aiming performance, get the Delta Point Pro night vision. If you want a good carry dot that also has good passive aiming performance, then get the Holosun EPS, and maybe get a second Holosun EPS for when your first one fails at a low round count and you gotta send it back and wait for a while to get a replacement. If you want decent night vision performance and an enclosed optic for a duty pistol, get the Trigicon RCR. If you want all of those things on a piggyback optic mount, get the Acro P2. There you go, I committed to something, or five separate somethings, depending on your use case scenario. Come on, man, there's always factors involved. Anyway, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you subscribe. If you'd like to support this channel, you can do so by clicking the link in the video description to subscribe star. There are some various benefits, but I don't care to explain them to you now because this video is already too long and I'm getting pretty drunk, so I'm gonna go ahead and tie this one off. Thanks for watching. See you guys next time.